Last week, I spoke to Alex Lieberman, who started writing an email newsletter in his dorm room, and then a few years later sold it for $70 million. For me, starting an email newsletter was one of the best decisions I've made in my life as a creator. And now every time I send an email, I make around $5,000, which is more than I was making in a whole month of working full time as a doctor. So in this video, we're going to be breaking down why you should potentially consider starting an email newsletter, what you might want to write about, and then the step by step process of how to go about this completely for free. And this is episode one of Creatorpreneur Club which is a new series where we're going to explore principles, strategies, and tools that we can use to kickstart or level up our creative entrepreneurial projects. Let's get into it. Part one, why you should maybe start an email newsletter. All right, so starting an email newsletter is the perfect starting point if you are new to the whole being a creator thing. So firstly, because it's completely free, there are a bunch of platforms out there that we're going to talk about later in the video that are completely free. You do not have to pay a penny at all to start an email newsletter. And this is kind of different to starting a YouTube channel where yes, you can film with your phone, but then there's, there is an element of like cost that it takes to get started with something like a YouTube channel, an email newsletter is completely free. Secondly, an email newsletter is very, very low friction. It's pretty easy to just get started writing. If you know how to type something, you can probably send an email newsletter. Again, something like starting a YouTube channel or starting a TikTok or an Instagram, it's like it, it does take a certain level of friction and a certain level of faff. Whereas when it comes to an email newsletter, all you have to do is type a few things and hit send. And so it's one of the easiest kind of platforms that you can get started with as a creator. Thirdly, an email newsletter is private in a nice kind of way in that you're writing stuff for public consumption, but realistically, no one is going to be finding your thing. There is no algorithm that encourages people to sign up to your email newsletter. So really, if you want, you can send your first several issues completely in private. And hopefully that'll help you get over the hurdle, the kind of the emotional barriers that get in everyone's ways whenever we're thinking of starting a new creative endeavor. Putting yourself out there on camera on a YouTube channel is admittedly a pretty big step. A lot of people really struggle with that step. But if you can put yourself out there in a small way and take those baby steps by, for example, sending a weekly email update to like a handful of friends or even no one or even just your mom or grandma, that really helps you kind of whet your appetite for what it's actually like to be a creator and share stuff publicly on the internet. And the final reason why starting an email newsletter is a great starting point is because ultimately it's all about writing. Now, any other kind of creative platform that you create on like YouTube channels and YouTube videos are really about the writing, even like TikToks and stuff. If you're going to do them well, it's about scripting it and writing it and like structuring it in a way that makes a lot of sense. But the problem with all these public platforms is that you ultimately don't own the audience Own the audience. That sounds kind of weird, but you ultimately don't own the audience. YouTube owns the audience. And I right now I'm just, you know, building a house on borrowed land like this YouTube channel is only successful because of YouTube, the platform. Whereas if I can take some of my audience and put them onto an email list, now I have a direct relationship with that audience. Now I can show up in their inbox because they've given me permission and I can show up in their inbox every single week and share stuff of value, which also means that when I have something to sell, I could potentially sell it to my email list. And to be honest, we've made over $2 million from selling our part-time YouTuber Academy, not through selling it on the YouTube channel because I tend not to mention it on that, but actually through selling it on our email list. Because generally when people are on an email list, they've given you permission to contact them, they can unsubscribe anytime. And it does help you build that relationship. People can reply to the emails, you can reply back. I've also made a bunch of friends through the internet because people have signed up to my newsletter and then have replied and then I've replied and we've formed, formed an exchange and maybe met up in real life or had Zoom calls. So that's one of the downstream benefits of having an email list that you can build up this audience, which you then kind of own in a way that you don't really own your audience on other platforms. And the second main reason is that to be honest, an email newsletter itself could become an asset that you can then monetize further down the line if you want to. I spent like three and a half years writing my weekly email newsletter before I monetized anything in it. Although I did have some affiliate links. So I was always making a few dollars from Amazon book recommendations here and there. But recently we've started to get sponsors on the newsletter who pay several thousand dollars for like a slot in the newsletter. That's kind of insane that anytime I just send a weekly update, which I treat as a bit of a public journal that, Hey, here are some thoughts on my mind. Here are some articles that I like all that kind of stuff. By the way, that's in Sunday snippets, my newsletter, if you want to sign up to it. Anytime I do that, a sponsor is willing to pay five, six, $7,000 at the moment uh, to basically kind of get their message out to the audience, which is pretty sick. And of course, as I mentioned at the start, there are people like Alex Lieberman who started an email newsletter called Morning Brew, who are incidentally sponsoring this video, but more on those later. Alex Lieberman started Morning Brew in his university dorm room. And it was just a daily email newsletter that helped people keep up with what's going on in the world of business. And then he sells it five years later for $70 million. And this newsletter generates ridiculous amounts of revenue, which is why they're able to sponsor videos like this one. So obviously I'm not saying that like my newsletter or your newsletter or anything is gonna end up selling for $70 million, but I am saying that there is the potential that this itself, just an email, something as simple as an email that you send once a day or once a week or once every other week does have the potential to even make you money further down the line. And yeah, I just find it pretty insane that like something as simple as an email has the potential to do that. Part two, what should you actually write about? 
Okay, so at this point, let's say we're sold on the idea of having an email newsletter and you're thinking, okay, cool, it might be a thing. Like generally at this point, most people have this incredible like barrier that stops them from doing anything, which is that I don't know what I would even write about. And what I would say to that is that there's a few different ways of approaching it. Number one, broad brushstroke, you can write about whatever you want. Really being a creator, if you're new to this thing, is about finding a way to create content that you enjoy creating kind of intrinsically for its own sake. And then you're kind of hoping that that content is able to add value to other people as well. What I wouldn't recommend necessarily is for example, starting a newsletter, starting a YouTube channel, starting a TikTok, whatever, with the intention that like, I, I want to make money from day one, or I want this to be successful. Because in the early days where no one is watching your stuff, no one is subscribing to your channel, no one is like reading your email newsletter, it's really hard to have extrinsic motivation be the reason that you do the thing. Whereas if it's an intrinsically motivated reason of, I genuinely enjoy writing Harry Potter fan fiction, and therefore I'm gonna make an email newsletter where every week I write a few paragraphs of Harry Potter fan fiction, and I'm doing it for the sheer joy of the craft. That level of intrinsic motivation makes it way easier to stay consistent with the habit. And generally in the creator economy, being consistent is the ultimate secret to getting results. So you can just write about whatever you want. When it comes to my email newsletter, Sunday snippets, I do just write about whatever I want. Every week I think, huh, what have I been thinking about this week? Last week, I wrote about the Odyssey plan, which is how I'm figuring out what to do with my life. The week before I, I wrote about a conversation conversation I had with a friend that made me think about like how how like I'm considering my career and over time I've just built up an audience of people who just care about what's on my mind which is kind of nice and I sort of treat my newsletter as a public journal of sorts where I'll just share whatever I want and then share a few links to articles or books or podcasts that I'd listened to or read that week that I enjoyed and it's generally pretty chill and I don't think too hard about the email newsletter which is why I like it so much to be honest on my YouTube channel I don't just make videos that I want to make because it is like a business asset in a way. And it, you know, anytime I feel weird about the YouTube channel, it's because I'm over optimizing for the numbers. But on the email newsletter front, it's just so easy to not really care about those. It's just a public journal I'm sending to people who I consider are my friends, i.e. people like you guys who subscribe to the newsletter and people reply to it and say, oh, this was really helpful or this made me think about this or have you read this blog post instead? And then I read it and then I reply to them. And it's just, it's just a kind of nice relationship builder in a way that's fairly chill. If you're looking for other ideas for things you could do, the other option for an email newsletter is to just curate things. So if you're watching this video and you've gotten to this point, chances are you're the sort of person who is quite smart, sophisticated, intelligent, very handsome, very good looking, of course. Uh, but you also probably spend your time reading stuff, listening to podcasts, watching videos. And every week you've probably got something or another that you've read that you found is interesting. And you can just share those in a weekly email newsletter. That's how Tim Ferriss, who runs one of the most successful newsletters in the world, started Five Bullet Friday. Every Friday, he just sends out a list of five things he's enjoyed that week. It might be a blog post, it might be a book, it might be a documentary, it might be a gadget. And he just started off sending it to friends and then started sending it to his audience. And now he's got over 2 million subscribers to this email list. And he probably had, generates millions and millions of dollars a year just off the back of a single email list. So curation is an option. The other thing that you can do is you can write about something that interests you and just do that every week. For example, that's how Morning Brew got started. Morning Brew, by the way, thank you for sponsoring this video, is a completely free daily email newsletter, which basically gives you updates in the world of business and tech and finance. And so if like me, you're interested in those things, you can sign up completely for free in the link in the video description. And every morning they'll just send you a nice summary of what's going on in those worlds straight to your inbox. They do it in a genuinely entertaining way that helps you understand what's going on. Like what's, what the hell is going on with Elon trying to buy Twitter and then pulling out of it? What's the deal with that? What is happening to the price of Bitcoin these days? And what are the macroeconomic factors around like inflation and stuff that's making that happen? What are some businesses that are like, succeeding despite the recession? And like, how are they doing it? There's interesting things like that that's written in a genuinely engaging and informative and kind of fun way. And it's completely free. You might as well sign up. It's completely free. You can unsubscribe anytime. I read it every morning because it helps me get updates in the world of business and tech and finance, which is three things I care about. So yeah, check out the link in the video description to sign up to Morning Brew. And thank you so much, Morning Brew, for sponsoring this video. And Morning Brew was started by Alex Lieberman, who I mentioned at the start of the video, and I interviewed on my podcast last week. And he talked about how he was just interested in the world of business. He was getting into the world of business. And he just realized that there was no good resource out there that helped you stay updated on business advice, which is why every day he just decided to write this thing. And then it grew into this ridiculous like enormous media company that he then sold for $70 million. So you can check out that podcast interview I've done with Alex. Uh, we've had a bunch of comments saying that that's like an incredible podcast episode. And we talk about a bunch of things like life and happiness and the death of his father and how he dealt with that and like a bunch of stuff that's just generally interesting and outside of the world of newsletters, but it might be quite an inspiring podcast to listen to if you're looking for ideas for what sort of email newsletter you might want to write about. But really the overall message here is you can write about whatever you want. And the great thing about an email newsletter is that it's a fantastic practice ground for being able to dabble with what it's like being a creator. After that point, you might decide you don't like it. You might decide, you know what? I CBA, I can't be bothered to write anything every week. I don't really like the idea of sending stuff publicly. I'm very happy in my day job and just like, whatever. 
that's fine, but at least you've tried it out. Or you might do what happened to me and a bunch of my other creator friends and think, oh, it's actually kind of fun sending out an email every week that just tries to add a morsel of goodness to people's lives and help them out in an interesting way or just document something I've learned. And you might decide to stick with it. And I've been sticking with it for the last four years and it's now a you know staple part of the business and it's really fun. And it's the sort of thing that I probably am gonna continue doing for for the long term. Part three, how to get started with an email newsletter. All right, so the first step to get started with an email newsletter is to pick a platform. Now, there are a few different options you've got here. The option that I use personally for my newsletter and have been using for the last like two plus years is called ConvertKit. But the problem with ConvertKit is that you have to pay for it. It is a paid platform. It is ridiculously powerful, incredible if you wanna take this newsletter thing seriously. They have a free plan. I think your first 1,000 subscribers are free, but you do then have to pay and it does get quite expensive. Right now we pay several thousand dollars a month for the privilege of using ConvertKit. It's totally worth it, but it is a paid product. I'll put an affiliate link in the video description if you wanna check it out, but it's generally not what I would recommend getting started completely from scratch. If you wanna get started completely from scratch and you wanna do it without spending a penny, there are two main options that you've got that I would recommend. The first one is Substack and the second one is Review. I was using Review for the first two years of my email newsletter and it was absolutely fantastic and it's completely free and it was recently acquired by Twitter. So the nice thing about Review is that if you are serious about growing on Twitter, people can subscribe to your email list directly from your Twitter profile because it's nicely integrated and it's completely free so you can try out review. Alternatively, we've got Substack. Now Substack has been around for a few years now as well. And honestly, if I were getting started completely from scratch today, Substack is probably the route I would go down. Basically, you go on substack.com, not sponsoring this video or anything, but people at Substack, if you're watching this, let me know, would love to work with you. And we just hit start writing. You can make an account or you can sign in with Twitter exactly like I've done. And you just write a quick description, musings from my day-to-day -day life as a doctor turned creator entrepreneur, lol, kind of cringe, but oh well. If you have an existing email list, you could bring a CSV in and populate it, but you don't have to. You could add subscribers from day one so you can get your parents or your grandparents or your friends to sign up if you'd really want to. Again, I'm gonna skip this step. And here we are. I've just now got my own newsletter, which also doubles as its, as its own website, aliabdal.substack.com. It's live, you can check it out if you want. And now if I wanna send my first issue, all I have to do is click new post and I can just write whatever I want. And I've just written my very first issue of my email newsletter and now I'm gonna hit publish and then I can send that to everyone. Do you wanna add subscribe buttons to your post? Yeah, why not? Now I have my first email newsletter. I hit publish and we are good. If I want to, I can share it on Facebook and share it on Twitter or I don't have to. I can just do this like this and treat this like my own personal practice ground for publishing something on the internet. And now if we open up an incognito window and go to aliabdal.substack.com, here is what it looks like. Ali's newsletter, musings from my day-to-day -day life as a Dr. Tone Creatorpreneur launched a few seconds ago and then people can subscribe directly from this which is kind of nice it's quite simple or they can read it first and they can read my kind of first issue which should be here somewhere my first email newsletter there we go this is cute this is kind of nice and then there's the option for people to subscribe and it's all completely free and I know people personally who have made hundreds of thousands of dollars a year by just starting a completely free email newsletter on Substack and later switching on monetization or getting sponsorships or selling their own products, all that kind of stuff, which is all part of the business of being a creatorpreneur. If you've gotten to this point in the video and you start an email newsletter, send me an email, ali at aliabdal.com, and I promise I will subscribe to your email newsletter. So you will at least have one subscriber if you would like, if you don't want your friends and family to be your first subscribers. If you are potentially interested in learning more about the ins and outs of what it's like being a creatorpreneur, I have a course on this. It's called The Part-Time Creatorpreneur. You can check it out, link in the video description. And if you're looking for more theory and more of a framework on how to get started with being a creator, you might like to check out this video over here, which is my, my three level system for growing a YouTube channel. But the same thing applies to growing an email newsletter or any other sort of creative business. So check out that video over there. Thank you so much for watching. Do hit the subscribe button if you aren't already, and I'll see you hopefully in the next video. Bye-bye.